if I had to rely on a framework, which, you know, as we know, frameworks are useful. If I had to rely on a framework for any piece of content, it would be the good old tried and tested AIDA framework, which is attention, interest, desire, action, right? That's the journey that someone goes through from not knowing what you do or not even thinking about you to actually pulling the trigger and saying, hey, I want to book in for a call. And um, so just, just keep this in mind, any of us when we're producing content is the thing that I really like about what the thing that we teach in high ticket sales funnels and the thing that we're teaching in these trainings that we're rolling out for you at the moment is the attention piece is, um, you know, uh, just like, you know, Sam was talking before about the, uh, we don't, we don't believe in tourists. That's a great headline. That's a great way to attract someone's attention. Okay. In that, in that niche. So once you've got their attention and usually, you know, in my world, it's all about how do we get better quality clients and turn them into recurring revenue. If I start that conversation with anyone in, in our market, I've got their attention straight away and they're listening because that's what everyone wants. So understanding what your target audience want and leading with that, starting like entering the conversation that they're already having in their head, right? Now, in order to crank up the interest part of it, this is why I'm such a big believer in using your process or a part of your process to start a conversation. So, hey, you know, if you're interested in blah, 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 you're gonna love this in this, uh, in this um, piece of content or this training or whatever it is, this infographic, this podcast episode, this blog post, whatever it is, this training video, uh, you're going to learn X. And X is a very, very specific thing. You're gonna learn one thing in this training, in this piece of content. And, so this is so so I've got I've got your attention by sort of starting the conversation with what you're interested in. Then I've then I've piqued your interest by saying, "Hey, I, I'm going to help you with this one very specific thing." So focusing their their attention on one very specific thing. Then the desire piece is revealing that that one thing is just part of a larger puzzle. It's just one piece of the larger puzzle. So Simon Maid has been doing a lot of work on his model, uh, and if you think about the, if you, if you know, you know, we talked about models in San Diego, if you do end up with those nine things around the outside of your model, the idea is that you just pick one, you just go deep on one thing and help them with one thing and then reveal that, hey, this is just one part of a larger puzzle. And that if you want, if you really want to get results faster and better, then you need the entire puzzle. It's like, I've just taught you how to play the trumpet, but it works really well if you've got the string section and the piano and the, you know, timpani and the percussion and the woodwind section all playing together because then it becomes a symphony. So this is just one part of the larger puzzle. And if you really want to get results, you need all of these pieces playing together and that's where we can help, which is actually action. So the desire piece is you kind of blow them away with your domain knowledge about one specific thing, but then you reveal that this is just one part of a bigger picture. And that's, the, that's really what cranks up the desire. Cause they're like, wow, if you know so much about that one thing, but you're telling me that that's one of nine things that I kind of, and it makes perfect sense. So for example, the example I'm using at the moment in these videos that we're making is um, if you're a branding company and you just do branding, part of your branding process might be, you know, first of all, understanding the strategic objectives of the company. Then it might be user research and market research. Then it might be, you know, brand assets like, colors, typography, logo, all that kind of stuff. Then it might be uh, rolling that out into a corporate uh, identity like business cards, website, letterhead stationery. And then it might be a brand book or a style guide so that they can actually manage their brand moving forward. They might be the five parts of your process. I'm just making this up. One of the things that you might go deep on is, because one of the things that gets searched about most when it comes to branding is font pairing. Like which font pairs are going to be, you know, which, you know, what should I, should I still be using open sans in 2020? Like everyone goes gaga over that stuff, right? People love fonts. So you might produce like a really epic guide on font pairing, but then reveal at the end of that piece of content that font pairing is just one part of the branding puzzle. And if you really want your brand to sing, there's no point having a great font pair. If you don't understand the tone of voice of your brand, because you're not using the right words and those words aren't appealing to your target audience because you haven't done that research and they're not tied in with some kind of strategic objective because you haven't done that work. So you kind of, you, you enter the conversation that someone's already having in their head. Oh, I want to find out what goes well with Lato or Open Sands. Enter the conversation at that point, but then reveal that, hey, there's all this other stuff you've got to be thinking about as well, right? You've got to pay attention to this. 
If you can show enough domain knowledge in one particular area of it, they will automatically credit you with having the authority and the knowledge for the rest of it. And the fact that you show them that you have a process instantly differentiates you because 99% of the people on the planet don't have a process, right? And in the absence of a process, they will just try and invent their own. So SEO is the other example. There's no point doing keyword research if you don't then build links to that page. And one of the, the hacks with SEO is that you could just do keyword research, analyze the front, front page of Google, and then make stuff that's better or more current or better looking than what's already on the front page. All right, so everybody wants to know how to do keyword research. Everyone's like, show me, the, show me the unicorn keywords to go after. Well, sure, that's just one part of the puzzle. I can show you that and I can blow you away with how technical we are and how good we are at that, but that's not actually gonna move the needle unless you have these bits in place. Oh, and so now you control the conversation. So just keep that in mind. And the reason I'm prescribing this and I'm really trying to move away from prescriptions, but the reason I'm prescribing this is because I just know it works so well that it is the, the blowing them away with your knowledge around one particular thing, but then the intrigue that that is just one part of the puzzle. Um, and, and as soon as people are intrigued, they want to know more. And if you take it away from them, they'll come chasing it. Hey, in that video, you said that there were all these other things and I want to learn what all those other things are. Of course you do. Hire me and I'll teach you everything I know or we'll do it for you, depending on your model, whether it's done with you or done for you, right?